In the last part, we changed the way how the pickup and the player collide with each other. We modified the pickups from it being a rotating piece of wall to a collectible that the player can walk over to collect. It's great that we got this far and make things work, but there aren't really that many colors here. If you remember from the beginning at part 2, a starter content folder came along with the project if the project was created with starter content. And there are many sample materials that we can use to decorate the game. But what if we want a simple solid color material? Or maybe make the player more metallic or reflective or use our own images as a texture? Then we would have to make our own materials. So in order to make our own materials, right click in the content browser and select material and I'm just gonna name it um, M underscore pickups oops M underscore pickups there we go the M stands for material and you may notice that all the default materials are prefixed with M underscore it's a naming convention thing for materials and the link to that asset naming convention is in the description if you would like to learn more about that Double click to open up and we have a new editor looking window to deal with. I think it's not that complicated because it's it has that blueprint look. In the middle, this is where we'll have our nodes set up to create a new material here. On the left hand side, you have a live preview of what the material looks like on this particular shape. In this case, by default, it's a sphere, but you can change the shape with these little icons to a cylinder, a plane or a cube but I'm gonna leave it as a sphere here and underneath it has its own details panel on the right hand side the palette section is a list of nodes that can be used to help make your material I'm going to keep the pickup very simple by giving it a solid color color and maybe a little bit of shininess to it first I'm going to add a constant vector 3 and this will be my solid color node I'm going to convert it to a parameter so that I can rename it to color. And if we do make a material based off of this one, we can just change the parameter to give it a new color. But we'll look into that in a little bit. So I'm just going to double click here. Or you can change the value here of the color. And I'm just going to give it like a yellowy color. Something like a treasure, like a coin. Maybe a little yellow and goldy. Maybe that. You may notice that it's still black, and that's because the alpha is at zero. So we want to raise this up, and you can see that the new color changes in this little square here. So I'm just going to raise this up all the way, and I think that should do it. Also, it may be black because I did not connect this to the base color component. So now we should be able to see it like yellow. Awesome. Now for the metallic, I'm going to use a scalar parameter, a uh, scalar parameter node, which I'm going to call metallic, which is going to be named after where this, this node connects to the metallic component. I'm going to organize it a little bit, bring it up. Over here in the details panel where it says material expression scalar parameter, we're going to edit the values here. I'm going to set the min to zero. And I'm going to set the max to 1. I just want to keep it between 0 and 1, like 0 or 100%. As for the default value, setting it to 0, the light looks like it disperses out. If I were to rotate, you really can't see the highlight. but And it's harder to tell what the light source may look like. Setting the value to 1, though, gives it an opposite look. There is a more noticeable highlight right here on the sphere. I'm going to set the value to 0.8. That's just my preference. But it's up to you on how you would like the pickup to be. It's nice to experiment or play around to your liking. Same goes for the roughness that I'm about to do next. For the roughness, it's going to be pretty much the same thing with the metallic. We'll have a scalar value or a scalar parameter. And I'm going to call it rough. I'm just going to have that connect to the roughness here, the roughness component of the material. And it's pretty neat. That's what happens when we have the value set to zero. So I'm going to leave the min to be zero and I'm going to set the max to be one. 
So giving it zero will have that reflective like mirror look and what and having it set to one will just be the opposite. It, it doesn't reflect. For me, I'm going to set it to 0.2 because I do want some reflection, but not too much. And all right, and there we have it, our very first material. But don't forget to save and apply. Applying will make the changes to the material. So let's go ahead and assign it to the pickups. In the pickup blueprint, make sure to pick the cube component first. In the material section, there is a little drop down that we can click on, and in it, we can search for our new material that we just made. So, M underscore pickups, and it's gonna be right there. After we pick the material, we can see the changes already made in the game. It's pretty neat, and this is a good time to actually make some tweaks to the material. However, I plan to tweak uh, off video so that way I don't make this a long tutorial. This is just another creative part of the series. For the player, I'm just going to right click on M pickups and select create material instance. I'm just going to call this MI, which stands for material instance underscore player. Double click to open up a slightly different editor. This is interesting. What's going on? Where are the nodes? This editor is for material instance. We created a material based off of our first material, M underscore pickups. If you look over here in the parameters group, you may notice that these were nodes that we converted to parameters in the first material, the M pickups. Now we can simply make a new material by just changing those values and not have to worry about connecting the same nodes over and over again. To do so, make sure to select the checkboxes next to the parameters so we can actually edit them. So, and also by default, we have this huge live preview of the new material and it's pretty awesome. So for color, I'm thinking more for me, uh, maybe like a grayish, whitish looking ball. And I think that looks good. And maybe for metallic, I'm going to set it to 0.2 and it has that nice looking white marble. It reflects the buildings a little bit from the skybox. I think I actually like this ball, but you can always be creative here and make the player to whatever you would like, would want it to look like. And don't forget to save. And to apply a material to the player, it'll be exactly the same thing. Make sure you select the sphere component and just look up the material in the material section. So in this case, it'll be MI, and there it is, MI player. And then I can just hit compile and save. And if we run the game now, we can see that the player has that material that we just created. As for the level geometry, like the walls or the floor, you can create a new material or just make another material instance based off of M pickups. I'll leave that one up to you. You can apply it just by dragging and dropping the material onto the objects like that or just select it from their materials section. One more quick thing, I'm sure someone, somebody is wondering on how to add your own texture. To do that, first you need to import the picture by dragging and dropping it into the content browser. Then after you make a new material, you can add in a node called texture sample and connect it to the base color. In the details panel, there is a texture option that you can click and search for your texture. And you'll be able to see your own texture in the live preview. And there you have it, all wrapped up for this part. If you're coming from Unity, please stick around just a little bit. I'm going to compare the materials between the two engines. Here in Unity, making a material is pretty easy and very similar. You can right click to and make a new material like so, but I already have some materials here for this project. In the inspector, you are given all these parameters. Clicking on the box here will open up a color wheel. In the inspector, you're given all these parameters by default. Clicking on the box here will open up a color wheel or a color box, depending on how you view it. There's also the metallic and smoothness 
sliders similar to what we made in the blueprint but they have their own little sliders that we can tweak with there also there are different texture maps that we can easily drag and drop to, into just need to drag a texture into the albedo slot or if there's a normal map or height map versions of the textures we can also drag them and plug them into their respective spots there are some other cool stuff here that we can tweak but they all depend on which shader is being used. I know I didn't mention this earlier or use that word in Unreal, but what we are seeing here are variables or parameters that we can tweak with that are used in that shader. In Unreal, we created our own shader, a simple one. And a shader is like a rule set for how the colors get displayed, how textures wrap around the object, or how do they react to light. I know you can do more but I just want to list off a few common usage of it. If I change the shader to an unlit color, then we can only change the colors here. And the walls just seem to have, doesn't seem to have any values, no lights or shadows. So we can't really see the sides of the wall. There is a way to make your shader in Unity. It's called Shader Graph, which works with Unity's render pipelines that have been there since Unity 2018. There is the lightweight render pipeline and the high definition render pipeline. In this example project, I used the lightweight render pipeline and I was just playing around connecting the nodes to make some interesting exper experimental looks. And of course, you can learn some cool looks or effects for your game by watching some shader tutorials. I don't have any because I'm not that good at them right now, but it's always interesting to see what kind of shader tutorials are out there. So try them out. Wow, there were a colorful amount of information in this part, and we are really close to finishing this series. If you'd like to learn more about materials and maybe getting more practice with them, then check out the links in the description. Comment what you think about the materials down below, and add a little blue thumbs up if this helped. And I will see you in the next level. Bye!